Is everybody seeing that script okay? Or the screen? All right, so I'd like to present the Kentucky Office of Energy Policy Energy Affordability Dashboard. Um, the dashboard is set up uh, with four tabs here. You start out by seeing the overview tab. Um, it's got a description here of the of the dashboard itself, its purpose and intended uses. Um, the purpose is to aggregate data around energy affordability, specifically on the topics of demographics, education, poverty, um, education, poverty, and energy burden. And then you have uh, the housing section, which is talking about heating fuels, um, housing age and housing units, and then the utility section, which focuses on electric, gas, water, and other fuel utilities. Um, so here on the overview page, this is what you'll see when you open up the dashboard. There's three boxes down at the bottom. Um, there's technical notes that provide uh, a data uh, description of the data that's used in the dashboard, as well as a walkthrough of the dashboard, um, the data sources that are used within the dashboard. You have a fact sheet that um, gives an overview of specific statistics that you can pull out of the dashboard across in, uh, specific statistics that are uh, throughout the Commonwealth. And then you have a data summary that is a document that has the majority, if not all of the data in a PDF format, in a narrative format that you can uh, read through rather than interact with the dashboard. If you want to send that to a stakeholder or some anyone who's interested in the dashboard, um, but doesn't really have access to it at the time. So those are the four tabs throughout the dashboard. Um, we'll go ahead and jump into the demographics section. If you get this uh, little warning screen when you open up the dashboard, um, don't worry. All that's saying is that there's no background map associated with the visualization there. All the details of the map are there. It just doesn't have a background to it. So you can just X out of that. So the way that the dashboard is set, the demographics dashboard is set up is you have the two parameters at the top. You have the map visualization, the map narrative summary, and then down at the bottom, you have tab, tab, tabular data that breaks down the individual variables that we've used to discuss the demographic um, variables of the Commonwealth. So um, we'll start with the parameters up at the top. If you click on a drop down, of the demographics parameter, um, the parameter for demographics, you can select the different variables that are included within these. Um, so you have average energy burden for the low income population. The way that we described low income population for this dashboard is um, households less than 80% of the average or the area median income. Um, some will use 60%, less than 60% of the area median income or AMI. Um, for these purposes, we chose 80%. I believe that when um, we were doing a solar for all application, we used the 80% uh, parameter. And so it just translated into that because I already had that data um, at hand. So we kept with 80%, uh, less than 80%. And then you have the total population that is not taking into account area median income. You have median household income below poverty level as a percent of the total population, working age population, which is described here as ages 18 to 64. Those, uh, the percentage of the population with less than a high school diploma of working age individuals, and then for associate's degree and higher and bachelor's degree and higher, we bump that up to ages 25 to 64. The other parameter that you have here is the state average parameter. So as when the dashboard opens up, it'll be set to all counties. So you'll visualize all counties, but you can also select the map, which I'll show in a bit, um, to only visualize the counties that are above the state average for the selected demographic parameter or the counties that are below the state average for that selected demographic parameter. So um, we'll jump when you also when you open it up, it will automatically visualize the low income population average energy burden, um, but you can go ahead and change that to any of the other demographic parameters. So, for instance, we'll select the low poverty level. 
on the map here, you'll see it visualized on a color scheme, light to dark. Um, for those counties that are that have a less per, a lesser percentage of those below the poverty level upwards here um, with this little sliding bar. There's a couple of ways to interact with the map visualization. Um, you can use the slider. You can use this region filter here where you can select between the different regions. Multiple or singular, and then you can also click on this little arrow here and use the lasso to select specific counties. And then there's one other way that I'll show in just a second. Um, but we'll start out with just um, using the slider filter. Say that you only wanted to visualize counties that have at least 20% of the population in that county is below the poverty level. You can select that and it will show you the counties that are below um, that threshold. You can clear that out. You can use it as a slider, like I said, or you can actually slide back and forth to set that range. So that is your slider option for the regions. First, you'll have to uncheck the all selection. That will reset the dashboard, wipe it all out, and then you can click on the specific regions of the Commonwealth, and that will update the data. So here we have central selected. You can add east into it. You can also add urban triangle and then west. If you want all four of them, you can do any variation of that um, that you'd like to get that. With the region selections, anytime that you change which region is selected, the data in the, the tabular data at the bottom will also update with only the selection that's present. So here we have the central and the east. All that data has updated in the tabular data. If you select all, you'll see that all of the data updates with the new selection. So that's the region filter. And then, like I also said, you can use this lasso function here. There, you can also use the rectangular radial, but the lasso is nice because you can really form it to how you want it. So say that you just wanted these southeastern counties in Kentucky, you can just select these. It'll pop up what counties you've selected, and then it will also update that tabular data. If you want to Clear, uh, clear that out, just click outside of the map region. It'll reset. And then there's one other uh, way to filter out the data. If you press on a county, we'll use Jefferson County. And then if you hold control on your keyboard and select also Fayette County, it'll update. And then you can also select Warren County. And you have updated data with just those selected counties. So you can do that with as many counties that you'd like at a time, or you can just do one, um, whatever you're trying to use the dashboard for. So again, just click out of it in the white space, the dashboard will reset. Over to the right of the screen, you have a map data summary. So each time that you click on a new demographic parameter, you'll get a little narrative summary of what is being displayed in the dashboard. Something happened. So if if something happens, just refresh refresh your view um, and go back to whatever you're trying to accomplish. So we'll select median household income, and you get the updated map uh, data summary. You can export that as a text object, or you can copy and paste it um, if you want to throw that into a document or an email or whatever you're uh, trying to do with that data. So that's your map data summary. As I said, all of those will update. I, let's jump back. I forgot to talk about the state average parameter. So say that you were looking to only find the counties that are above or below the state average for median household income, which here is $53,804. If you selected this and said, I only want to see the counties that are below the, that average, you can collect you can select this and it will visualize the ones in blue are below, the ones in gray are above. If you wanted to flip that selection, you switch it and then we'll get the opposite um, visualization depending on what selection you have. We can go back to all counties and you'll have the, the range of colors. So that's the map visualization and the map data summary. We'll jump down to the bottom tabular data. On the left side, you have all parameters that are available. Right next to it is the 2022 value, whether it's an average or a sum. The sum for 
the working age population parameter is a sum. Everything else is an average. Um, and then the next two columns, you have a one year change, year over year change, and then a five year change as percentages. I'll note um, for the average energy burden, that data is sourced from the lead DOE's lead tool, and they use five year estimates. So as a result, you can't you can't estimate a percent change if you're already using a five year change. Um, so that's why those are nulled out, but everything else does have the one in five year changes. So for this 2022 data, the one year change would be 2021 data, five year change, 2017 data. Those are your two percent change columns. And then on the right, as you'll see in that small text, it says see technical notes for explanation of data inside the technical notes, which that link was on the overview page. If you go into the technical notes, it'll describe that a little bit more in depth. But what it's saying on the left side of the divider is what that county or average, since we're looking at 120 counties here, what that county's average is. And then you have out of is the divider out of the distinct values within that data set. So for the average energy burden for low income population, there were only nine distinct values within that uh, data set within that range. Um, most of it ranged from. Let's look at it in the average energy burden for low income population on the low end, you had 4% of the average or of the gross income. Or 12% was the high end of that range, and there was only 9 distinct values within that. If you go to the total population, there was only 5 that average was from. 2. 1 to 5, so some counties only 1% of uh, gross income goes towards energy expenses for some counties as much as five for the total population. So it it, it can be a little um, hard to understand, but like I said, read the technical notes and that should become a little bit clearer for you. And if not, if you have any questions with anything in the dashboard, we can revisit this at the end. You can email me. Um, I'd love to chat with all of you about it. So that's the demographics. Um, dashboard. We will move on to the housing dashboard now. So here in the housing that in the housing dashboard, it's kind of split into three sections. Like I said, you have the heating fuel section, the housing age section, and the main or in the uh, housing unit section. Um, you have map visualizations for each one depending on the parameter, and then down at the bottom you have a bar chart that. Uh, gives you the spread of the data uh, where where the housing um, lines up within each category. So we'll start in the heating fuel section. The data from this dashboard comes from uh, the Census Bureau PUMS data set, public use micro data sample, maybe survey sample or survey, one of the two. Um, so that data set. Um, in the heating fuels, there are the options of electric, utility gas, bottled LP gas, fuel, oil, coal, other, and none. You can select any which any of these and it'll update that map only. Um, the chart will stay the same because it's a complete um, subset of the data or a complete set of the data, not a subset of it. Same deal that you had with the demographic section. You can use the slider to only visualize the counties that are within that uh, selection range. Um, so if you are looking for counties that have at least 50% electric heat, 50% or more, you can type in 50% and it'll visualize the counties that have at least 50% of that. You can click this little filter with the X to reset that um, view. I found that if you didn't reset it and then you jump to other sections of the dashboard, it gets a little wonky. So anytime that you use the slider after you're done using it, I would recommend um, clicking that X to back it out so that you don't mess things up down the road. So you can um, select any of these. It'll show you the color range. So here in Kentucky, at most the county, Owsley County has 15.2% fuel, uh, fuel oil as the primary heating fuel for the households. Um, also, you can use the lasso function here, the lasso the same way that we did in the last one. And then also, um, just because of 
spatial configuration. I wasn't able to put the regions filter for each map, so it's up here at the top. And if you select that, it'll do it for all three. It won't just do it for one, it will do it for all three. Um, we'll just do that to showcase that the, obviously it resets. And then once you select a region, it'll only show the counties within that region and the bar charts at the bottom will update to only show the percentages, the breakdown of percentages within that region. So you'll see here, it was 60% for electric when you're only looking at the east, but when you go back to all, it changes to 58.59. So that's our region um, filter. You have the heating, we already talked about heating fuel, we'll reset that to electric. Here in housing age, PUMS breaks down the housing age ranges by 20-ish years for the majority. So you have 1939 and older, and then 40 to 59, 69, 60 to 79, so on and so forth, until you get to the 2000s where it goes to 10-year increments, and then you get to 2020 or newer. Um, I will say that some of the data is a little wonky because if you're looking at 2017 data, it didn't have the that the category for 2020 or newer because obviously 2020 wasn't here yet. But then when you use the 2021 and the 2022 data sets, those do have those um, those new categories. So you have to be a little cognizant of the fact that there was a little bit of mashing between the data sets. Um, but that's that. So that's the housing age. Um, you can select any of those. It'll update just that map we'll go back to 1980 to 99 because that is where the majority of the commonwealth's housing age lies within and then the last section of the dashboard is the housing units it's set here to manufactured homes um, you have the breakdown across the state the other options are detached units attached units and then apartment wise you have two apartments three to four apartments five to nine and then ten plus apartments You'll see with the 10 plus apartments, you'll usually just see your urban areas, Bay County, Jefferson County, Warren County, and North, uh, Northern Kentucky. So that's the housing dashboard. I think I covered everything for this part in it. Um, so we'll move on to the utilities section, the utilities dashboard. So it's kind of set up the same as the demographics dashboard is. You have the parameters at the top, the visualization, the map data summary, and then the bottom tabular data. For the parameters for the utilities dashboard, it's set up uh, by five different um, variables. You have electric monthly, gas monthly, utility gas monthly, water monthly, and other fuels monthly costs. Other fuels are things like wood um, that you would use as a utility to heat your home. Um, and then the last one, uh, which is visualized first, is the combined utilities um, as a monthly cost, which takes into account all four of those. So we'll start with this one. The second parameter you have is the time series. So it starts out set to 2022 or whatever current year the data is on. There's also the one year percent change and the five year percent change. If you wanted to visualize how across the Commonwealth, where have we seen increases in combined monthly utilities or electric or whatever utility you have selected. You can visualize that either on a one year or a five year percent change. We'll keep it on 2022. And then the last one is the state average parameter again, where you can see, OK, what counties average more, uh, what counties are above the state average for combined utilities or whatever utility you have selected. So you have that option as well for the utilities dashboard. Same uh, filter capabilities, you can use the slider, what counties are above 400, average, uh, on average $400 a month for combined utilities. You have the regions, I won't do it because it takes a little long to refresh. So you have the regions and then you can also use the lasso here to select specific uh, areas of the Commonwealth. You have the map data summary. Also, if you're viewing it, depending on the zoom of your computer, some things make it set to automatically resize to whatever um, whatever monitor you have. If it doesn't, play with the zoom capabilities on your computer to make sure that it sizes to the correct format. But if there's anything that ever gets cut off in the dashboard, usually if you hover over it, it'll it'll pull that narrative or whatever the text is into fuel full view so that you can visualize it um, without any issues. Um, 
And then you have down here the tabular data kind of set up the exact same as the uh, demographics dashboard where you have the variable on the left with the 2022 value right next to it. The one year change and the five year change. These were all in, adjusted for inflation. And then the county utility ranks, same deal. Left side is the average for that county or counties. Right side is the number of distinct values. So for electric, there was only 117 counties that had um, different values for that. And then you have monthly gas, water, and other other fuels. All right, so that is the dashboard. There's a ton of ways that you can use this depending on whatever you're trying to get at, whether it's your uh, going to apply for funding and you need some baseline summary statistics, uh, whether it's on demographics, housing, or utilities. Um, this dashboard is intended as a starting point. It's not intended for you to get every single bit of information out of it, but it's a starting point for you to come and gather whatever information on energy affordability, hopefully, um, from this. There are a couple of there are two ways that you can access this. So we'll exit the dashboard here. Um, here's the technical notes. A few pages, the fact sheet and the data summary. But I'll show you the two ways that you can get to this dashboard. Um, here on the Energy and Environment Cabinets web page under Energy. You can come here to Programs. And if you scroll down to the bottom, there's energy affordability. If you click on that and scroll down, here's the link to the affordability dashboard. That's one way to go about it. The other way is you can just select right here on energy dashboards and you can get to the dashboard here. You can also see all the other products that our team has assembled. All right. Um, that's it. Um, if anybody has questions, feel free to unmute yourself. Um, I haven't been looking at chat. If there's been any any way to make this larger so it's easier to see or read. So sorry that I didn't see that until now. Um, but like I said, if you play with your Zoom here, it's set to resize so it can be um, it's always set to conform to whatever screen you're looking at. Um, but it does it does increase the um, size of the text a little bit. Um, we'll leave it at 100 for you. All right, I'll open it up to questions or throw anything else in the chat. If none. Um, like I said, unfortunately, Ashley wasn't able to be here. Um, she is the lead on our energy affordability work group, and I'm sure that she's going to be putting together some um, dates, hopefully in the future for us to meet. And if you have any questions about the dashboard, feel free to bring those to the next meeting of the work group. Um, or if you'd like more immediate answers, feel free to email me. I'm sorry, I did not put my email in the. Um, in any presentation, but it's here now. That's my email. Um, feel free to send me anything that you have. Any suggestions for how to make the dashboard better? I would love those. This is kind of a first run at it. Um, in this format, we had a different format. I changed it a little bit. Um, so if you have any suggestions on more data that you would like to see in there, um, or other things visualized in a different manner, um, I'd appreciate it. If there's nothing else, thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you.